All right, welcome back to Noise Avocation Podcast. I'm Ryan here with Jeremy as always. What up? I don't really have anything news-wise going no, on. me neither. Before I forget and mention it at the end, as always, check out Blast Beats Vinyl. Uh, he just did like a huge restock on a bunch of suffocation, obituary, immolation, all sorts of stuff. So get on the website, use our promo code NOISE for 10% off your first order and check that out. But check this week out. we um, had an episode that like we as record collectors have come across many many times like you're in a store and you're picking something up and you're like man this record looks sweet and you get home and it's the complete opposite of what you expected or the cover had like no indication of what the music was so you kind of just took a chance because it might have been cool or alluring to you somehow and you're just like it either ends up being good or bad i mean it works both ways in that scenario like for some people, King Crimson's first record is one that I could think of with the real ugly face on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Whether or not you're a King Crimson fan, that would kind of depend. But, like, see, that's I one I didn't that. bring. I hate of, that cover, I but I like the record. Um, and there, there's just a whole bunch out there. But, like, we went at this as, like, a. Uh, You've never seen this band before. You don't know the name, um, so you have no idea what they're about. Otherwise, it would be really hard. It was to really find hard because records like, with nothing on them. Yeah, because you know them. Yeah. So, you know, you pick up like New Order or something, and like the second record, um, you're like, "Oh, well, I already know this because I know New Order," but. Pretend like you didn't know it. So that's the that's the set of eyes we're walking into this yeah. with. And I'm sure we'll probably have like a couple duplicates because neither one of us know each other's list right now, aside from one or two that we kind of talked about. But for the most part, I mean, it's like always the one a you may have just mentioned. I, I did. No, that, <laughs> that works. That was that's a, perfect. That was a slip up. That was. I know it was on mine, and I talked to you about it like yesterday. But this record, I mean, you look at it, and it kind of just looks like, I don't know, an old lady's, like, bathroom painting or something. And Oh, yeah, this would be on my grandma's wall or something for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like you look at definitely. it, and you're like, well, that's uh, cute, I guess, for, like, above some nothing fucking the Christmas back. decorations. Yeah, nothing on the back. And it, I mean, there's not even song titles on the back. So you, you know, pick this up, look even at Even on it. the fucking spine, dude, it just tells you factory and gives you the catalog number. Yep. And it, mine says the album name. Does it? Fact 75. Or maybe that's the album, the record label. That No, that's what it is. Factory 75. Oh, that's the catalog number? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> look at my dumbass. But that's a... Uh, but that's a prime example of one that's like if you don't know you're gonna just be like what the hell is this i don't know and then it's and i mean unless you're like discog savvy where you're gonna scan the barcode on the back because there was a barcode on the back wasn't there yeah so you could scan that check it out and go that way we're gonna pretend you couldn't do that because when this came out there was you couldn't scan the fucking barcode so you pick it up in the store and you're basically going off of whether or not you like the old lady's artwork because i don't really see how that record cover like pertains to the record whatsoever if i put myself let's say um uh, you know i was even this age back then when that came out and i didn't have any idea Let's say I just, all I knew was like, oh, MTV, you know, may have played a video or something, right? Yeah, you heard Blue Monday. You heard Blue Monday came out. It was came first. out before. Yeah, but I can be honest and say I'd be like, I'm not gonna waste my fucking ten hard earned dollars on this fucking piece of shit. You know, minimum yeah. wage is a dollar fifty. You know <laughs> what I mean? This shit's hard. I do like the first record more. Movement, I think, is better. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, the second record's good, but like. It just seemed like it got a little lighter. Yeah, no, it's definitely the um, on that one they they got away from the more of the Joy Division sound for yeah. sure. Well, because the first one was basically Joy Division songs that yeah. didn't get finished. Agreed. I actually, since we're on the uh, on that same band, 
Yeah, see, I, I knew you were going to bring it. I didn't even... Uh, oh, you brought a different one. Oh, there's this one. Yeah, the other New Order. Yeah. Yeah. So, same deal. Not There's absolutely nothing on the spine of this one. Anybody want to guess? This would, I would assume, sound like metal of some kind. I don't know. Wouldn't you think this would be like some hard rock from... Because this came out in like 80... Let me get the actual date. Uh, that one was... 86. That was after... No, it was before Substance then, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that would have been the third record. And... Uh, but yeah, I mean, you Love look at it, it, it kind of looks it, like, but... it kind of looks like industrial metal almost. Yeah, right? Like, like Nine Inch be... Nails might have put it out yeah, or something. exactly. But yeah, no idea. Again? And now that you just brought that up, that reminded me, I was supposed to grab a record out of the front of the store that I didn't grab. Yeah. But Emerson, Lake, and Palmer brain salad surgery, that's got that that's H.R. True. Giger cover, and it... Looks so badass. As always, I've fell for that record so many times. Like, it'll come in in a collection, and you're looking at it, and you're like, damn, this is fucking awesome looking. Like, it looks like something, like, Tool would put out. And then Because it is, but it's a yeah. little early. But then you, like, look at it, and you're like, man, this is... Uh, or you listen to it, I mean, and you're like, this is not what I expected whatsoever. It's very... Soft rock, slow, mellow. I mean, yeah. it's Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Like, I was you know. never a huge Emerson, Lake, and Palmer dude, but that's like that whole late 70s thing. That's like my mom. Yeah. So, I've never been into them. But they are uh, everywhere around here. The, yeah, we get tons of their records. Definitely. And I come across that album all the fucking time. And now, after years, I've finally been like, oh, okay, brain cell surgery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's going to come a day where a band does like, a replica of the cover. Um, I mean, the residents have done it with the Beatles and like shit like that. So there's going to become a day where some band does that cover and then <laughs> every record store that gets a used copy is just going to toss it in their oh, dollar yeah. bin. That, that is that is interesting. But speaking of H.R. Geiger covers or Geiger, whatever you call it, this Blondie record was, I think the cover is really, really cool. But the music did not live up to it whatsoever. No, like it I have, looks like I it's going to be. Too, and I, I didn't bring it, but I have that album, and it's like, it is not a a, a good album at no, all. Honestly. Like it looks like. I mean, you know, Blondie, so you're going to expect Blondie. But to me, the cover looks like it should be like a dark synth album or something. Yeah, like yeah. Kind of. Or like well, Debbie Harry's going to sing about some fucking weird shit. Yeah, or something. But it's just a pretty much it's almost like slow pop like it's not even i love blondie and i don't yeah, like that record. yeah that's not that's not well it's debbie harry but yeah I that's mean, the trick though especially when they people come from other bands it's hard to differentiate have a different sound yeah and then when they do something like that it's like ah, most sometimes it works like it. though people, where they're like they change it and then the change was for the better, and it was all good and worked out for them, and the band went did over well. Like Opeth's an example. Some people right. like the new stuff. I, some of it's really good, I'll admit that. But for the most part, like when you take that sound and change it, it's going to fuck with people. Like Oh, yeah, gonna, with the core member. Or your the core, core fan fans, base is not sure. going to resonate with that sure. at all. I got another one. How about a little Motown? It's the Temptations Power. This record, um, they were on they were on Atlantic for a few years, and this was like their comeback to Motown album. I don't think I've ever even seen that yeah, Temptations does this, record. Does this look like a Temptations record no, to you? No, not at all. It looks like some, like honestly. It's like a Seals and Crofts record. I always thought it was like some Nazi crap or something, because, I mean, I don't know, it was like... I, Eagles, Red, I don't know, I didn't know, but not Temptations, right? Um, a lot of those Motown covers, like they looked like that yep. right there. Yeah. The back cover looks more like the, like that would be on the cover, and then the yeah. cover would be maybe on the back. Yeah, like they should have taken that the back cover that you have on there, flipped it, and then in that blank space in the middle put the Temptations in there, and that should have been the record. Because yep. <laughs> it doesn't even, and it's not even big print. like no. And the and it's just like this sun. Like you can see like the little uh flares coming. Like it just makes no sense. And it's straight up temptations. There's nothing weird about it. 
It's, it's not just, like a like experimental a standard, record or anything. It's a standard like singing about broken hearts, love. Weird. Um, that was an Atlantic record. This is a, this is the first Motown back on Motown record. Okay. So they were on Atlantic, which the album before this was called um, Bareback. And uh, yeah, I'm just power. Sounds better. I don't know. It's on Motown. So if you like. Uh, Temptations, check it out. But um, other than that, I love strange. the Temptations and a lot of those Motown groups. But I will say, like most of them, once they get to like their like later career albums, kind of didn't like a lot of the solo Smokey Robinson records. Oh yeah, they might have like one or two good songs on them, but the rest of them are like just real slow love ballads. That... Well, I mean, and that's basically what that is. And it's 1980, so it's kind of like like yeah, you said, it's, it's probably in that like soft. Jazz they're not even era. in Detroit anymore. They're like in fucking L.A. or whatever. Yeah. And that happens with all artists, though. Like, you get to a point in your career, and then your whole life has changed, so you're not singing no, about the for, same like shit definitely. that brought your career on. But for sure. Sometimes it hurts the music. My next one is a kind of oddball record, but this is a band called Demon Fuzz. The album's called Afrika. I bought this simply based on the cover. Because I looked at it and Never I was like... Never seen that before in my life. <laughs> I looked at it and I was like, damn, this is really cool looking. I honestly kind of thought with a name like Demon Fuzz, it was going to be like stoner metal-ish. Yeah, that's what kinda. It, yeah. Dude's wearing a fucking sock on his head. Yeah, yeah, and it's like a cutout sock. And then like the background has like, I mean, he's kind of like, like cut some, up and maybe stuff. Maybe some Mexican wrestling music. That'd yeah, be it cool. does look like a little bit of a, a Lucha Libre mask. Yeah, yeah. But... It's like jazz fusion sort of thing, oh, okay. like, and it leans hard on the fusion side. Like it's all sorts of fucking blended. So when you went to grab things. it, you were thinking, like I would, that it was just some stoner metal, psychedelic kind of stuff. Yeah, because yeah. you look at it with the name, I was like, you know, Afrika. I figured it would be like world music inspired, so it'd yeah, probably yeah, have some crazy drums or something. Not so much, eh? And I mean, the record's sweet. It's a great album, but it just doesn't look like how it. Would. I don't know the year. Yeah, it was in like the 70s, I, I believe, that it came out. And this is a bootleg copy. Like, this is a hard record oh, so to that, find. See, that looks like that might have been released in like, I don't know, last week. Like, somebody would make, I don't know, it's crazy that came out in the mid 70s. Somebody put that on a cover then? Yeah. Seems pretty ballsy, I think. I've only ever seen this record one other time, like, in the wild. Uh, and especially here, I mean, I'm never going to see it here, but right. I was at a record show in Bay City, and uh, some dude had a copy of it there, but again, it was a bootleg, like most of them are, like it was kind of one of those albums that, I don't know where the original pressing was done at, label-wise or yeah. anything, I probably knew at one point and forgot, but it's one of those, like, it got done, put out. They didn't really bother, like, making it a widespread thing because I imagine that it wasn't, like, incredibly popular here, no, at least. No, for sure. So it's, like, you can only get it on bootleg, basically, or it's an astronomical amount of money to get an OG press if you can even find one. Yeah, I would say finding one would be the hardest part. Whether the price is high or not, like, that would depend on who had it, I guess, like, what it meant to them. I mean, I, I can't foresee it being, like, a $1,000 album, but you never know. Yeah, I, that's just a jazz fusion is an area I have no knowledge of. I dabble in it. Like, I like a lot of, like, the Return to Forever, like, Chick Korea and shit like that, but um, I don't know, some other stuff, too. But, like, there's a, a jazz album by an African group called the Hishu Bishu Group. And the cover has Hishu Bishu. The cover is like a Abbey Road thing, but it looks like it's like in Ethiopia or something. So there's like a guy in the wheelchair in the front, and then okay. there's like a starving dude behind him, and like they're all like in a torn and tattered area. It's not like Hollywood or wherever the fuck that picture was taken. I don't remember the exact area. Um, I'm not a Beatles buff, so <laughs> but it's all like the third world country version of that album cover. Oh, I gotcha. it. But it's like real good quality jazz. 
That's what's up. When was that released? I don't remember. Oh. That was another one I bought because of the cover. I was oh, like, okay. I was okay. Like, oh, that's cool. I forgot to grab that. My next one is a former guest. That's a good one, actually. Yeah. I was thinking that you might have grabbed this one. I wasn't sure. Mm-mm. I didn't even, like, really think about it, but now that, like, you look at it, it does look like it could be, like, Time Cop or something. Yeah, 80s synth pop. And they said it was heavily influenced by that, if I remember right. So go back and listen to the episode. But, uh, yeah, this definitely does not look like a fucking 15-minute hardcore album. No. But I do love the cover for that. Yeah, and the car, dude, that car is awesome. Yeah, like, I'm big on... Vibrant colors and shit. Yeah, this one's good. I might wear a lot of black, but I like it to have colorful print on it. I like their <laughs> but, merch too. Like the yeah. merch for this album is really fucking cool too. But um, yeah, safe Midwestern home, seize the day, short term pleasure, long term haul. Who wants to die tonight? The opening track, man, this shit's fucking awesome. Yeah, it is a dope record. So yeah, go back and listen to the fucking episode. One of these days, we should have a key, like, on the wall over here of our guests and episode numbers, because I was going to say the number, but I never remember oh, what yeah, they that's are. Oh, yeah, I also failed. I want to say that was 86. That we'll sounds we'll close. find out <laughs> if I'm right after the episode or not, but I remember it being close to the One Life Crew episode, so. And since I designed the shit, I was like, well, I, I kind of remember it, but. Um, the next one I had was the Crusaders, those Southern Knights, which the Crusaders were originally a jazz group. They were called the Jazz Crusaders. This record to me, the cover wise, I mean, it's obviously like sort of a parody thing on the title because Knights is spelled like, you know, Knight, like K-N-I. Knight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Knights of the Templar. Yeah, yeah. Like, but you look at it dressed. and it kind of looks like, I don't know, it could be like some Celtic folk rock type of stuff. And this was, I knew the Crusaders before this, but like we said, we're going in the, into this with blind eyes. But they used a lot of album covers like, you know that Sugar Shack painting that yeah. Marvin Gaye has yep. on that one record? Um, and then like from Good Times, like where JJ had all that like tall figure skinny yep. guy artwork. Yep. Like they used a lot same. of album stuff like that on their covers. So like to see this one that looks like kind of like I don't know, weird, uh, like, old-timely, you know, back in, like, fucking kings and queens renaissance times. Like, it's a great record, though. I mean, it's all, like, jazz. It's not traditional, like, blue note jazz. It's got, like, a little bit of funk added into it. I wouldn't quite call it fusion, but I guess by the literal definition, yeah. It's like it touches on the funk. Yeah, it's like... We live for Before the that eighties the the jazz stuff came in, like where Stanley Turrentine and all those guys were like doing that like heavily guitar driven or not yeah, yeah, Stanley yeah, yeah. Turrentine, Stanley Clark, I'm sorry. They were doing that like heavily guitar driven, yep. like fucking strong jazz fusion, jazz shit. fusion yeah. stuff. Like this was a little earlier than that. This was this was seventy six. Yeah, some of that stuff for me is like um a can of worms I'm leaving alone for the time being. Yeah, it's I a have a can. lot of Crusaders records, actually, because normally you can find them for, like, 4 to $6 or something clean. So I have, I don't know off the top of my head how many records they have, but they have quite a few. I'd say probably 17 or 18. I have probably 12. That's a that's a pretty decent fucking um, discography for. And a, then I got a couple Jazz Crusaders records. But it like seems like they, they just pump jazz musicians, man. If they're pumping shit out, you can, they're just pumping shit out. You yeah. Know? Well, I like it because it's like smooth, mellow, like good, like chill music to have on in the background yeah, if yeah. you're like doing shit around your house or reading or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes with the um, hard bop or even shit with lyrics, man, you can't read. Yeah, sometimes hard bop can be like too piercing on your ear. Right. Or you or pay there's attention too much because going you want on. To. Yeah, yeah. Or they're like breaking down into you're listening to Bitches Brew and there's fucking like eighteen oh, solos there's so going, much going on. going on in that album. Oh, what do you uh just glancing at this looks like a jazz album, a blue note album even, right? It is a blue note album, but yeah. 
Well, sure, but <laughs> in the traditional sense, it's uh, it's put out by Blue Note, but yeah. it is a hip hop album by Mad Lib. But it's it. fully constructed of samples of, of Blue, Blue Note, Note yep. which is cool. But yeah, looking at it, I've had a lot of, um, like, I even know, like, John, like, he. I think picked up a copy of that record. Yeah, because he posted it about it, and yeah. I was like, "Holy shit, dude! He's posting about Mad Lib. That's fucking yeah, dope." Yeah, like I would assume even more than just him, since he's a big Blue Note fan. Like I would assume a lot of other Blue Note followers had come across that record and at least listened to it, because I mean, it is really cool, and especially if you're a fan of Blue Note jazz, like you have all those you might even be able to pull some of them samples out yourself like if you're familiar enough well, I mean, with it with me it's like kind of both like i'm a fan of, i'm a fan of mad lib and i'm a fan of fucking blue note and hard bop jazz like you and this is just the perfect marriage of it and the fact that they even let him into the vaults is like pretty yeah. astonishing you know like and eh, we, we trust you with all these fucking masters that are like priceless literally, yeah literally legendary yeah. So I always enjoyed this album, and it's pretty long, actually. I don't remember what the fucking length is, but it's a lot longer than fucking 15 minutes. Yeah. Also, the last gasp episode's 81, which is... 81. I was close. 82 is one life, so yeah, yeah. you're close. Yeah, but, I um, like that record a lot. Yeah. That's another one that's pretty mellow to like sit back and listen to. The, this is the uh, Vinyl Me Please version. That's why it's all shiny and cut off, because these are a fucking pain in the ass to get back in, and I don't want to do it. I always fold mine out flat and stick them in the side. Oh, I follow you. Yeah, I got them all. Because I don't Ooh. like when they like cut off the actual like jacket itself, like the picture on yeah, there. Yeah, I just left them. But I have seen a lot of people, like, they'll take every single Vinyl Me Please title they have and, like, they shelf them that way. But that would break up my alphabetical order, so I never did that. Oh, see, okay. I d mine are like that. Oh, are they? I have my Vinyl Me Please. Separate? Separate. But they're all hip-hop except a couple. Like, two that I, I got, like, one-offs of here or there, you know? Right. Like, I have 40 ounces to Freedom, Sublimes. That's with Sublime, but... Yeah, I, I guess I never thought about that because I was going to put them in alphabetical. There's a couple that I have that don't have the thing. Like oh. they, I have a few that were made prior to them starting. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Um, they because they used to have them where they were like the it was like purple and white, but it was like a OBI strip that goes down, but it's kind of like tapered off as you go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have like a Snoop Dogg one and an MF Doom one that are done that way, and I think the Fuji's one that I have is done that way too. Maybe even Biggie, because those were all like 2017, yeah. 18 that they did those. They were a while back before Vinyl Me Please got as big as they are now. Yeah, because even before that, I subscribed to them and ended up with like one okay record and like three other shit albums when it was like oh we're just gonna give you what you want and you can exchange and it was like a total pain in the ass and now they're on point you know yeah yeah well, we did a episode about vinyl subscription services yeah. like i remember talking about vinyl me please quite a bit yeah that's way back they're um lately though like they're real hit and miss like they to, but I guess if you're a fan of some of the hip hop stuff that they're doing, like they're doing like mid 2000s shit right now, yeah. and a lot of that I didn't really care for, no, depending on either. what it was. There was a few standouts. There was the good side to that underground wise. Like I think underground hip hop like really shined around that time, especially like yeah, with Griselda and all that and, shit. Not even that. That was a little down. The, well, they they were early on too, but I didn't learn about them till like later down the road. But like rhyme sayers atmosphere all that stuff was real big at the time like in like 2004 or 5 oh yeah early 2000s i mean it still is sure. but like yeah when it's during Outcast then, came out and all that shit yeah and there was like so much god loves ugly young jeezy and stuff like that that i didn't i wasn't really a fan for uh, i know it was big but like the puffy productive product yeah that shit's just not yeah i never really about cared the for all that and gold because i don't have any <laughs> yeah All right, next one I got is Curtis Mayfield's Sweet Exorcist. Is it Exorcist or Exorcism? No, it's Exorcist. So this to me looks like it would be like a psych rock record. Um, yeah, almost I was thinking like, like a psych. Like Grateful Dead-ish, kind of. I don't know yet. Not Grateful Dead. If I, me looking at it, I think it's like some psychedelic rock funk shit. Not 
Curtis Mayfield. I, I don't have that album, nor have I ever seen it. So I found it at a record show um, in April when they did the one here. Oh, right on. But up until then, I'd never seen it either. And, I mean, it's cut and dry Curtis Mayfield. It's soul right music. Like, it's got a little bit of funk here. But for the most part, I mean, if you listen to Curtis Mayfield, you know what he's doing. So Yeah, that looks like there'd be some heavy fucking fuzz going on. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. And... I mean, there's a couple spots where it's got, you know, some guitar shit here and there, but it's, like, it doesn't resonate with, like, how, I don't know, this cover to me just looks like it would be, like, very rockish or psychedelic, like you said, or even, like, more on the fusion side, but it's just kind of, like... I like the waves and the skulls. That shit looks dope. Yeah. I don't know about the naked dudes, but... (laughs) Yeah, it is a really cool cover, but it's no super fly. Um, right. And then, like, the inside has, like, a bunch of other oh, stuff that's in dope. there, too. Yeah, I like that. And then on the back has Curtis. That's a typical Curtis there. Yeah, like, that. Sh- if that were on the album cover, I would yeah. be like, oh, yeah, oh, Curtis shit. Mayfield. Like, you can look at that and be like, well, this is either going to be Curtis. funky or soulful. So, uh, but this, I mean, you look at it and you're like, I really don't know I what don't know. to expect. Like, if you're, uh, I... I like this, though. Like, I like when you see a record and you're like, whether you know the artist or not, you look at it, you're like, damn, this cover's sweet. And I just buy shit based on that a lot of times, and it's served me well, and it's bit me in the ass before. But, like, Ginger Baker from Cream, like, he has a ton of side projects. Yeah, oh, yeah. Ginger Baker's Air Force. um, the Baker Gorovitz Army or whatever that other yeah, one was he did called. did not stop after Cream, that's for sure. Yeah, and they have some really fucking awesome album covers, but they're more, I don't know, fusion-y. Um, and I wanted to throw Molly Hatchet in here too, but I don't have any. No, neither do I. And since and we were out of it, it up, we were like, out of it at the store really? too. Yeah. See, that's the like we were talking before. That is the perfect example of like even. Before I knew who Molly Hatchet were, I was like, oh, this is like got to be like a, a maiden knockoff or something, right? Yeah, it looks like straight Viking yeah, metal. Like, like you think it would be fucking amazing. Pretty but. much. And I've heard a lot of people like overhearing stories who were like, oh, remember when we bought Molly Hatchet and we thought it was going to be like crazy heavy yeah, or yeah. like the next like metallica or something and it, it's just southern rock it's like a t- it's like the story most told about molly hatchet mm-hmm. yeah that's not i mean really. granted like there are some awesome molly hatchet songs but they're i don't know like you think leonard skinner like you look at their yeah. records and you can kind of gather what they're about i mean street survivors doesn't really look like a um southern rock album but at least like you can tell by their outfits and well, shit. yeah you like, look at like their they're first like, one yeah like, like, you're like oh, they're from the south yeah and they're just dudes playing rock that like yeah that yeah. looks metal not southern rock at but all you get molly hatcher down there and you're like fucking oh this is gonna be like the next bathory or yeah, something i fucking it's, wish it's not here's my next one i'm not even gonna say anything i know you know what it is Damn, that was a good one, too. I didn't even think about now, that this, one. Remember when I was telling you, like, as I was running out, I grabbed it, too? This was one of the ones I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's um, is it so many other realities. Oh, that's Word, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Atmosphere is Word. Because so many other realities exist simultaneously was the other record that kind of had a weird cover, too. Yep. And it's almost like the same color scheme as that one. Yeah, this just says Rhyme Sayers. It does say Atmosphere on here, but, man, it's so small. But, no, it's a dope. I guess picking that up. fucking sick. I would, um, oh, yeah, that is really cool. My version's different because I have one of, yeah, I have one of the three, um, like, super limited ones. Oh, you have a variant? So there was three different um, artists that made graffiti, like, that said word. Oh, right. And there was, um... I don't remember how many. Now I wish I would have told you I was bringing it. Yeah, if you would have told me, I would have brought it. But it has, like, a certificate of authenticity in it that's signed by Slug. That's dope. And then it shows, like, how many are made or whatever. Sick. I like this album. Uh, Was it? Strong, Clocked, Sleepless. That's on the, kind of in the middle of the album. Track six, seven. 
Picking stuff. that up, though, I would, like, just first glance, assume... You could either assume hip-hop or, like, some type of pop, really. Yeah, now, see, I was thinking, like, Paramore of, or one of those bands. Yeah, there you go. Paramore would be a good one, Maybe too. Maybe Because it's colorful, it. bright. Um, Maybe Jazz Fusion. Yeah, it really could be a lot of shit. That's why I was like, man, you're coming with me, buddy. And then you were talking <laughs> about Atmosphere, and I was like, shit. Yeah. Anyway, anybody wants to check this? This one came out in 2021. And Pull the sleeve off that real quick. Oh, they're real consistent, too, about their, um, you know, output. They have been lately, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Like, and what? Your inside's <clears throat> not like this, though, either? No, nah, the inside says word. Just real big? I think so, yeah. Um, I'll have to pull it out when I go home and look at it. Yeah, that's dope. But yeah, I did have that version uh, at one point, but I sold it because I didn't need a duplicate. Well, sure. In my atmosphere section on my record shelf, like one whole cube is atmosphere. Yeah, I hear that. I have. I think I'm missing like maybe two or three. I don't know. A few of them I'm missing. I'm missing one, and that's it. Yeah, that's I need the one with the plane. Um, and I, I only really like like three or four songs off it, so I just haven't bought it yet. Yeah, but it's it, like complete. I'm gonna thing. buy it because I'm gonna complete it, but I'm just waiting to find like one that's yeah. not like forty dollars well it was funny when we were when uh, like a collection came in here the other day and from our last episode about disappointing albums a disappointing album popped up and i immediately thought like yeah i could use that to complete but i'm like man it is that bad i do not even want that fucking piece of shit i must i'm a shelf dude and, oh was it the gaslight anthem? yeah 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 yeah, yeah. That's funny because we were talking about that in multiple episodes. Yeah, and it's just, boom, there it is, you yeah. know? It's like, oh, no wonder somebody's selling it off because it sucks. Yeah, it's not a it's not a good record. This. Dude, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> so, I've never seen that before. Dude, you're busting out all kinds of crazy shit. This is Herman Brood. Um, he was like a... He was a Dutch, like, rock and roll, punk rock type of dude. He was married to Nina Hagen for a while. Oh, word. Um, if I remember right, he jumped off of a building to kill himself. I guess he was Dutch's, like, only rock star. Or, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. He was, or that or their, he was their biggest. From, from Denmark or something? I don't remember, but I just remember reading that he was... Either the biggest or the only at the time. I'd have to go back and double check on that. But, I mean, you look at it and you're like, well, I can't really tell, like, what the fuck. Well, what year is it from? Um, This would have probably been in the 80s. I mean, that's what it looks like. And a couple of other albums that I was thinking of bringing. If you look on the back, though, you can tell. Like, But it looks like a punk rock album from... Yeah. That that era. And it, it has like a tinge of punk. Rock I mean, that's what it. I would think. There's a fucking microphone and a hairy armpit. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's almost like it's definitely punk influence or early punk stuff. Um, it might have even been like before uh, punk was really like punk. Right, right. But I know he's one of those dudes that might. He's kind of like uh, Iggy Pop, where like. One record might be something completely bizarre, but a lot of his earlier albums, like I have this one, um, any Herman Brood with Wild Romance, like the Wild Romance was like the band that was sort of the punk band. Okay. Um, I, it's almost more like Heartbreakers, where it's, it is punk, but it's rock and roll, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's not a bad thing. No, not at all. But I mean, you look at it, you really don't know Fuck no. what to think of it. To like, be honest, I would pass it. Yeah, I, it looks kind of goofy. Just but based you, on the Cha Cha armpit cover, <laughs> yeah. I would be like, oh, I'm good. But there's like some saxophone and shit in here, yeah. and like he has a lot of sax in some of the other records, and he almost ties in some blue stuff in there. But there's a picture of him walking around naked on the back, and uh, I'm not gonna show that because I don't know if YouTube's gonna like fucking flag me for that or something. But yeah, I'd rather just leave it off. And. Uh, I don't know. He was a crazy guy, though. Like, unfortunately, he was a drug addict, killed himself way too early. And But he made great music, so check out Herman Brood. But a lot of his, uh, like the other, I have another record that this is just like a cartoon 
pair of jeans or something yeah yeah and that's what that looks like and then another <laughs> one just has like his green face on it or something just always off but the i always wall. thought this one was like the weirdest one because i'm like I, you just look at it and you're like it almost reminded me of like this could be a variant for like sweating to the oldies oh right on So my next one is this. I don't even know what that is. Doesn't give you any indication. What is it? There's a dragon, I think. Yeah, that's a dragon. Water. Water. Open it up. Another, I mean, another dragon and a bunch of it's lyrics. It's cool artwork, yeah. It is cool. But it's Shipwreck AD. Oh, okay. Um, this came out in uh, 2007. But I got this uh, with, like, a Death Wish order. Like, they just threw it in there. So right. um, I wasn't aware of it till then. Yeah, I've never heard of it. If you go on Discogs, you can get this album relatively cheap. But it's it's not bad, man. It actually reminds me of, like, if, if you took, like, 80s metal, like um, Rat or... And when I... I mean, talking, like, guitars, you know? Um... They have solos like that in it. It sounds like 80s solos mixed in, but with a, um, you know, a, uh, vocals that you would expect to come from, like, Death Wish, you know what I mean? And I don't think that this was their only full length that I found out. But again, like, nothing here, nothing, it's just, okay. And, uh, you know, it, it's worth a listen. Would I run out and buy it? I'll take it for free, though, you know what I mean? But yeah, you should check it out though. If you, um, you know, like uh, Dokken, you know how they had like their guitars had that like real chuggy chug, the fifty one fifty sounds with the wiggity 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 wow, you know, like that's yeah. what they do. It's fucking gnarly. And, you know, it's just kind of a weird mix for that time. So I think they have a couple of singles and EPs out. But yeah, whoop shit, shipwreck AD. Death Wish. I don't even know. But yeah, go on Discogs. I think you can get a copy. Brand new. Ten bucks, maybe. So while you were uh, taking a bathroom break, I went to the front of the store and grabbed... This is the Emerson, Lake, and Palmer God, record. That looks so like it'd be something so fucking badass. And it... Let me... Uh, it's hard to do without looking at it. Or even, even on the back. Like, it opens up into like that. But yeah, and then in the back it says brain salad surgery. Which would lead me to believe that it was like a Ramones record or something, you know? Yeah, Ramones would be a, a good one, yeah, because it does kind of like, the... like brain drain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it just looks heavy as shit. Like, this record has tricked me a ton of times. So if you're not an Emerson, Lake, and Palmer fan and you're out and about record shopping and you see this for a dollar, it is not a heavy metal record. You should hang it up in your house, and when people come over, you could, like, tell them it's some Giger thing, and, you know, you want it, and then, like, give it to them, and they'll just, oh, my God, like, no problem, man. It is so cool, though, like, the like, look of it. Like, I mean, I would just hang this as a poster yeah, yeah. anyways. It's like, it just looks that cool. And then the other one that I was talking about is one of Ginger Baker's side projects. Oh, yeah, it looks like some religious... Well, there's some weird shit going on at the bottom there, but... Yeah, it's all like... I don't know. They're almost like aliens or something. Or, I mean, they look like people, but they're like from a different civilization or some shit. Yeah, like uh, ancient aliens or something. Yeah. and I, That's it, what I like about, you it know... It kind of looks like a heavy metal record to me. Or like, maybe not like death metal or anything like that, but just like... Again, maybe some stoner yeah, metal yeah. stuff. From that, from the, it's like from the, around the mid 70s. Yeah, but it's just kind of like a rock record. Um, maybe even a little proggy at points. Yeah. I know it's said all the time, but that's the, that's one of the cool things about LPs, man. Is you can really like stare into that shit. Yeah. I mean, because if you, I don't know, it draws you in more. Like if you pick out a CD. It just doesn't hit the same. Like, the artwork's not as in your face. But I think you have a couple more than I do, so go ahead with another one so this will even us out. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I, mean, I went and grabbed those up front. I oh, checked I Molly followed. Hatchet, but I know we've been out for a minute. We Nothing used to get them all day, every day. 
And lately they've been like few and far between. I don't know what it it's is. A surge of it's Molly like they hatchet. dried up or something. Huh. Who's holding out on the Molly Hatchet? All the people that bought it that thought it was a fucking heavy metal record. I actually like the back of this more. Oh, Wilco. Yeah. But um, if you didn't know who Wilco... Well, in, actually, anytime you get a Wilco record, you don't know what the fuck you're getting. But I don't it's actually like... like Wizard album, basically. It could of. be anything. Um, I don't know how they got away with using Star Wars to this day. I don't know. Um, this is probably... I mean, could they use the name since in no way does it... I mean, does it relate to Star Wars at all? No. Lyrically, anything like that? But I was pretty sure at the time, George Lucas owned S-T-A-R War. I mean, like, I, I don't know. It was a thing. I remember when it came out, but they were like, yeah, nothing happened. And then this picture... I, is it, I believe this picture is hanging up in Jeff Tweedy's house or in their um, practice space, in their loft or whatever. But the back is just a barcode. So it really leads you to believe, I don't know. Can you scan? The, oh, never mind. I see there's another barcode in the yeah, bottom there. One down I was going to say, if you like scan the whole thing, does it show you? Does never, it come up in Discogs? Never tried it. But um, you open it up. And then it pretty much tells you what you're getting. Yeah. I just thought this was always a silly cover. I mean, if you were a Star Wars fan and you seen that, you could mistake it and be like, oh, this is uh, somehow relates to Star Wars, obviously, well, because I mean, nothing else think... on it says Star Wars, or nothing else out there says Star Wars, typically. Like, shout out to the Dogs of War, but when it says Dark Lord of the Sith, you kind of know what you're going to get, you know yeah. what I mean? Anyway, I'm not a huge Wilco fan. I'm like, pretty picky about their albums, in fact. But yeah, this I never, one, I like. i never been a Wilco fan. My uh, old lady got me into them. She's responsible for a lot of my fucking non-punk rock, hardcore, hip-hop shit. My next is, obviously, oh, everybody's going to know this. That's a good one. But The Cure's first record? Yeah, that... That tells you I mean, you nothing. get nothing out of that. Now, I've heard and read stories that, like, this is supposed to be, like, the the personalities of the band or something like that. Or oh, the okay, because of the three members? Yeah, or the band as, like, inanimate objects or some shit. I remember reading something like that in... Somebody's it book? It might have been the History of Goth book. Okay. But it might have been somebody else completely his book, too. Like, it could have been something else. But I just remember reading something about that, um, and I tried to find it. I couldn't remember <laughs> what book it was in. I, so I, I, was recall, I recall something along those lines, too, where there is meaning behind the cover, and nobody gets the fucking joke. Yeah, but they had, like, no graphic design at the time or no, like, yeah, this album first designer album, they don't have for fucking them. Money. And, the, I mean, the Cure... This doesn't even really sound like a Cure record, like traditionally. Yeah, I mean, it sounds it like sounds a punk rock more record. Like a punk rock record. Yeah. But if it, I mean, if this didn't say the Cure and you just pick it up, like you'd have no idea. I would expect indie rock, because it's just weird and like at the time, I I think yeah, you'd be like, is this the new like Talking Heads or something like? Or like, know. yeah, Talking Heads or like Wire maybe. Yeah. Or like. Not something, something different. Something you know, not the cure. I'm gonna leave a couple of these. I'm not even gonna do. But here's one that actually, at first glance, even I was like, "What? What? Oh!" And then I read the name. Oh, but Mind Force. This looks like some. When I first saw this, I thought it was like some Harry Potter shit, dude. <laughs> For real. And even, I was going to bring the other Excalibur in, but, like, I kind of was thinking, well, that one kind of says, like, you know, it shows him getting Excalibur, and it's, mm. like, kind of fighting. Ah, maybe not. But this, like, this got <laughs> me. Fucking Harry Potter. You know, just... <laughs> yeah, oh. no, it, uh, it's just funny that you said that. And then, obviously, everything else is straight up hardcore. Now, if you have not heard anything from this album... You've been living under a rock. You need to get out of that rock and listen to Mind Force right now. Yeah, the album's fucking awesome. Um, um, even... If you can see him live, <laughs> dude, that's pretty much like I was listening to him, and then when I saw him, I was like, oh, my God, like, sound better than any record, dude. 
and it's when the bands do that it's really hard to i like that his voice is unique yeah oh yeah like, you know who you it immediately is. like you hear it and you're like oh yeah that's yep. mind force yep um yeah that's true that's Man, hard to pull almost, off i mean that could be like a stoner rock record too like that, which he does do yeah it um it definitely has that feel to it but the <laughs> fucking harry potter thing that's, well, that's funny you know that's kind of I do like all these pictures. All Harry Potter here. jokes aside, we do love Mind Force. Oh, yeah, I love Mind Force. Holler it out to Mind Force. You guys want to get on the show, I'm more than happy. All right. Next one I have Twin Temples first record. I mean, yeah, it says. <laughs> I almost brought, brought that in, but then. It does say Satanic Doo up there, but like even. Oh, fuck, I didn't even know what to expect I when I read that. I was like, okay, what, what, whatever. I almost thought it was just like part of the really old nostalgic look to the album cover. I thought maybe the doo-wop was part of the thing because yeah, they, like, they the do gimmick. everything in mono and whatever. And yeah, it was like part of the gimmick. But I mean, you look on the back and it's, you know, skulls, candles, Hail fucking Hail Satan. There's a bloody goat head on a, a naked chick on the front. Like, you read the song titles. Uh, you know, the devil didn't make me do it. Lucifer, my love. Like, it looks by all means like a heavy metal record, but nope. it is the farthest thing from it. Like, It's one of the most unique sounding groups as far as content and voice. Like, who yeah. does that? I describe it to people as, like, if Amy Winehouse was singing about black magic and like wizards and Satan and demons and shit, it's pretty good. And a lot more sex is how Twin Temple would be. Um, and I, I got to see them open up for Ghost, and that was I never heard the band. Like I went to go see Ghost. I read them on the bill. I listened to a song. Because I didn't expect a doo wop band to be opening right. up. So and you like, want to be familiar I, yeah. with who's going to pop up. So I listened to a song, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, that was not what I thought it was going to be. So I'm like, all right, whatever. But you go see them live, and they put on an awesome show. Like, they all have really cool costumes. Like, they are they were dressed up in, like, some old-school rhinestone cowboy type yeah, of shit. yeah. Um, but they're, like, pouring blood all over each other and, like, stabbing each other with crosses and stuff. And they got, like, guys doing piano solos. Like, they had um, these guys that they called ZZ Bottom. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> That's <laughs> fucking dope. They came up and they were doing, like, solos. There was a dude with a saxophone. Fucking ZZ They had, like, bottom, a, a keyboard player that came up from the bottom of the stage and was doing some shit. Fucking like, wild. Awesome, awesome live show. Lots of fun. Really cool band. And I don't know. It's just like, imagine, like I said, Amy Winehouse or like your favorite like doo-wop artists. Like, uh, I don't know, like Pearl Bailey comes to mind immediately, but that's a bad one. I can't think of any others off the top of my head. But get back into that like 50s. Like the Penguins, the the Turtles, shit like like that. Yeah. Yeah. But Earth Angel. Take, there you go. Only it's Earth like Angel. I'm gonna fuck the devil or but some yeah, shit yeah, like yeah. that. Exactly. So I like you know that sound is cool, but I'm not a big fan of doo up. Most of it. There is certain groups that I do like. Yeah, see, I love me some doo up. When I hear this, I'm like, dude, I fucking love doo up now. So <laughs> like, it, kind of, it almost like takes you to yeah. where you can go listen to the other shit. But I just I like all the dark lyrical content and the imagery and everything to it. But, yeah, I mean, it definitely looks like a heavy metal record. Yeah, their um, their second album with, with them on the cover is a little more telling, but that's still pretty pretty confusing. Like, you don't think it's going to sound like that. No, and that because that had them, like, I mean, you can Western tell a little bit by the, stuff. yeah, that's what they were, like, on stage. Yeah, but I think they have, shit. don't they have blood coming down? Yep. The, yeah. And then it says God is dead underneath yeah. the cover. Um, for me, I, they're, um, I gotta be in the right mood to pop them on, you know? Oh, yeah, it's not an everyday It's not thing. an everyday listen, but, but it's definitely unique. Yeah, but when you do put it on, like, and a lot of it's, like, if you read it, it's funny, too, like. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely, like, the video, what was the song that they put the video out for? I believe you said the name of the song. I think it was I'm a Slut. Was it that? the one song, yeah, like, that's or right. Be a Slut, not be a, I'm a Slut. Be a Slut? Yeah. That's awesome. 
But there's like a a part of that song that's like, don't spread no gospel, but I'll sure as hell spread my legs. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, dude, that's some brutal ass. Laugh. That's brutal. I'm just going to get two out of the way, and I wasn't even going to show this one, but I'm just going to do it real quick. It's that Led Zeppelin 4. Yeah. So, this is probably the most famous who knows what the fuck it is album, and um, everybody knows what it is now, I would assume. Yeah, there's a, I can't remember the dude, but it's a painting by some guy. Yeah. So, anyway, I don't want to get too far some into Zeppelin. Guy. But... Yeah, I mean, just looking at it, like, I wouldn't... It's definitely a cool layout, I mean... I yeah, Honestly, a lot a of Led Zeppelin records really weren't all that descriptive of what it would be. Like, three, I feel like, kind of paints the image for the time, like, the just the random shit yeah, that was yeah, on yeah. the record. Two's just, like, them chilling on the record. One's a blimp. I think three is the for sure. Houses of the Holy is like children all on those rocks. kids climbing on rocks and stuff. And uh, yeah, most of that one um, album with the dude sitting at the bar, I can't remember the name of. Out Through the Door? Yeah. Um, Led Zeppelin 3, I always thought, because <clears throat> I don't know, I can't even tell you the first time I heard Zeppelin. This shit's been in my life forever, but Probably I always thought. before you even knew that exactly. you heard it. Exactly. So. I always thought Led Zeppelin 3 would be harder than it, and that's like their fucking soft acoustic album. But the story that I got with the Led Zeppelin 4 was they just wanted to put it out without any, without their name on it to see, you know, like let's just let the music stand by itself type of thing. Yeah. But um, the real one, my real pick is this. Now, obviously, because of the name. Is that Sid Barrett? But yeah, it's Sid Barrett's second album, solo. Um, for those not familiar, that is the original singer of the Pink Floyd. He did their first album. <laughs> the He's, Pink Floyd. That's what they called it then. Um, this is it just, just sounded like weird. you said the Walmart yeah, or the, the internet. Or oh, just like, going over to the Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> fucking rednecks. But yeah, this is put out on Harvest. This is a repress from a few years ago, uh, 2014. This came out in 1970, um, but it didn't do very... I mean, it didn't do good. What's this is the music a, like? Because like I know weird. he's real fucking odd. Yeah, it's just weird, and there's like tingy tang. It's uh, it's almost hard to listen to, to be honest. Um, but David Gilmore helped finish finish it. So, And it's just bugs, like, on, just bugs on the cover? Yeah. And what's, on the, what's on the back? A car. Okay. But the bug picture is a picture that Sid did some years before, I guess, like in school or whatever, before all the fucking acid took hold. So he was already kind of like a, a strange dude, obviously. He drew them? Yeah. Yeah, this is a... Shit, that's impressive. Yeah, it's like little crayon marker thing. Like 68, I think he drew it. This came out in 70... Or I'm sorry, this came out... This came out in 70. The Madcap came out in early 70. But that one, you can tell it's a fucking Sid album because he's crawling on the floor. Yeah. But, I mean, if you like, if you're into, like, the weird... That's another one that I would assume... make no sense. I would assume just indie rock. Right, yeah. This gives you no idea that you're listening to a guy that's lost his mind and can barely string two words together. If it wasn't for David Gilmore, this would have never been put out. I mean, you can look into it, and there's all kinds is it, of... Is it, like, Naked Lunch, but, like, put on to your oh, record? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Definitely. It's worth a listen, though. And if you're a Pink Floyd fan, um... That's one I gotta that's be... That's probably one that you're gonna, like, not... That's not Pink Floyd. Yeah. When you listen to it, there, it does not sound anything like Pink Floyd. I have... I mean, a lot of people talk about Sid Barrett and Pink Floyd, but... I don't ever hear anybody talk about his solo records. Like, they always talk about the first album. Yeah, lo- the Madcap. And then they talk about awesome. like how um, fucking Shine is a you know song oh, about dedicated him, to yeah. Sid Barrett or whatever, and that's the, like one of their biggest songs. But I never, I don't know. I like Pink Floyd, some of it, but 
I just never want to hear Dark Side of the Moon. Oh, again. I follow you there. <laughs> like, it's just so. I've been into the Pink Floyd. See, there I go with the Pink Floyd. But I've liked Pink Floyd forever. I can't help it. I don't know. It's one of those things I've, like you said before, I just remember it yeah. from wherever. So, like, I remember people be looking through my fucking CD collection, record, whatever. And then, like, I'd have Pink Floyd's greatest hits, and they're like, you know, like, fucking Youth of Today, or it's kind of fucking. Gnostic front. What the fuck? Pink Floyd, you know? But I fucking like the shit. When I was uh, like 14 or 15, I had a Pink Floyd beanie. Yeah, yeah. Because I just got it somehow for free or whatever. So I had a picture of me somewhere wearing a Demi Borger shirt with, with a Pink, Pink Floyd, Floyd hat. Beanie. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> like, is pretty funny. I've seen it and I'm like, oh man. It's hilarious. Those, those don't work together. But, but fuck it. Because I like both of those groups. Yeah. Uh, next that I had... Dark Throne's Astral Fortress. Obviously, you can tell it's a metal record by the Dark Throne. Oh, wrong side. By the Dark Throne font up here. Just looking at it, but like, since it's Fenris ice skating yeah, it's on pretty there, funny. it's like uh, I know it was like him kind of like making fun of how black metal people take themselves too seriously or whatever. But without the, you know, black metal font that's famous you really wouldn't be able to tell what this is. Like, it could be kind of anything. Like, I didn't know what to expect as a Dark Throne fan with that album. Right, and I think a lot of people didn't. Like, this could have almost just been, like, a folk record yeah. that was kind of like, you know, Winter Filleth or something. For all was... I know, it had been him just ice skating, talking shit. Like, he's funny <laughs> like imagine, that, you know? Imagine if it was just him mic'd up with some ice skates, talking That's shit. That's what I'm saying. I like this record. I thought it was good. I like the one that followed that just came out more. Um, it beckons us all. But that one, you look at it, it looks like something from Alien. You can pretty much tell that it's a metal album. Yeah. This one, I mean, it's got you know Fenris and Nocturnal Culto on the back. But Now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't own that album or the um, new one. But the new one, to me, is a little more black and roll, and that one's a little more in the tradition of the earlier metal is that correct of the earlier black metal yeah like this one's a little more along the lines of like celtic frost and yeah, stuff like the kinda. traditional black metal yeah that's what i thought i just wasn't sure um i would say the the new one takes everything that this one had mm -hmm. but adds doom metal to it yeah yeah and I, I don't know i'm a big fan of doom metal so to me that was like fucking no, that's it's a huge a, bonus it's a rocking fucking album for there's sure. tons of really cool like what i really like about it is it kind of reminds you of like um like on total death like there was a lot of songs where you'd have one constant riff and then out of completely nowhere it changes to a totally different riff and that's how like the new record did a lot too where you just have one like crushing awesome riff and then yeah. all of a sudden they go into some different breakdown and change the whole thing up and you're like that was out of left field but it fucking works but it works it's really cool that's cool yeah, they're known for those fucking grainy. J -j 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 all, yeah. all over. I have another one, um, even with the name. <laughs> Funny cover. Now, what do you? I mean, if you didn't know, you got like a rat. If I didn't know, maybe, I, I would assume that's cocaine, razor blade, credit that card. That rat poisoning. That, oh, there you go. Could have been rat poisoning. That kind of... Maybe they're from Florida? I don't know. Yeah. I got, Picking that up, I would almost assume that was hip-hop at first. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I mean, the font kind of makes it lean a little more toward maybe punk rock, hardcore-ish, but it does look a little more hip-hop-y. And, and even this, I would say, like, this lettering kind of yeah. reminds me of almost more of a psychobilly. Yep. Anyway, it's not. R.I.P. to fucking Pete, but this is a uh, Bishop fucking brutal-ass straight-edge music. It's a pretty cool-looking um, version of it. Anyway, yeah. I don't know if these numbers have any significance, but you can see four, three, five, six, and then six, six, six right there at the end. I know that's in there for a reason because that's what how that dude was. Mm. 
But this is pretty crushing, straight edge hardcore. I wish there was more out, like, kind of this style now. Um, I don't, I'm surprised that there isn't, really. I know. Like, this is, what, 2010, I believe? Shit. 2008, my bad. But, yeah, you don't. You don't have like the breakdowns like this does really. But I definitely give it a listen. I'm sure anybody that um is familiar with Mean Pete and Remembering Never, I'm sure have got to this. Or at least if you haven't, check it out. It's fucking awesome. And it sucks that guy died because he did so many different like styles of music that was cool. But um yeah, side B, fuck junkie, drama head, Arkham Earth, Rat in Your System, The Joker. I think it's some funny song titles, man. Dime Store Tragedy. But yeah, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> all right. The, well, this is the last record I have. The last two that I have are a couple CDs. Okay. But this, what do you get out of that? <laughs> um, I would probably say Psychobilly or... Um, no, maybe it'd either be that or like some psychobilly-ish country. Either way, it'd be yeah. like not so, what it is probably. <laughs> so Left Lane Cruiser, uh, they're just two dudes, um, and they often make a lot of their instruments out of random shit. Awesome. Um, it's like stonery blues rock, kind of, and... I mean, like, when you said rockabilly, that was why I grabbed it. Because you look at it and you're like, yeah, that looks pretty fucking rockabilly-ish. Like, rock them back to hell. Or, I mean, psychobilly, not rockabilly. And it, by all means, cover-wise, like, totally portrays that image. But, I don't know, you listen to it and it's more like, it's not twangy, but it's like, it's dirty grungy like distorted heavy like raw bluesy sounding stuff like in a real good way though like i'm a big fan of this band i actually found this record here like a long time ago steve before i even got into the record store um had three of them here oh right on. not this particular record but three left lane cruiser records so i just bought them all um great band though and I don't know if they... I believe they're still making stuff. I'm pretty sure they put out a new record this year. Well, what were some of the instruments that they made on there? Does it say on the back? Um, it gives... They do, like... So the back says drums and trash. And then, like, the other dude has guitar, vocals, bass, and Fender Rhodes organ. Oh, that's nice. And then there's harmonica and, like, some other shit on there, too. But... I mean, it was mixed at Ghetto Recorders in Detroit, which I just now noticed. I never noticed that before. I've never heard of that. Is any you know anybody oh, out there ever heard, heard of that? Hit us back. I never heard of that either, but that's cool. And other than that, it doesn't say any like instruments, but it's definitely got some very like you know how like Dwid made those guitars and stuff. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like they kind of made these guitars to sound like filthy blues guitars. Like or maybe cool. they just use a lot of pedals. I really don't know. But I don't know the intricacies to their setup like that. But Right, right. Cool record. So if you're a fan of blues stuff, like check that out. But yeah, I mean you pick that up in a store, you're like, ah, that's gonna be some no, psychobilly yeah. like you know what it looks like walking dead zombie cover. killing type of shit. That's what I was trying. Walking dead like um, the comic, not the TV show. Yeah, the like lettering. cartoony, the lettering yeah. is all, yeah. Yeah, I would fully think Psycho Billy. Like, that's, when I seen it the first time ever, that's immediately what I thought it was, Psycho Billy. Yeah. Looks like, um, it almost makes me wish I brought in a Madsen album, because it looks like that, too. This is my last record. Save the best for last. This really gives you no fucking indication. Yeah, there's no band name. There's no nothing. All you get is this. So if you knew, you knew. But this is fucking... I wonder... 85 this came out? Yeah, something like that. Is there a story about... Well, I guess, for anybody that doesn't know, that's Dead Kennedys, Frank and Christ. I guess we should clear that yeah, up that's, first off. Right. This is... um. But it's just a bunch of old album. Shriner dudes that like... I mean, it looks like they took that at the parade here or oh, something. Oh, I know. Shout out to Uncle Doug. And uh, 
I wonder if they, I don't know the story behind this. So did they do that on purpose? To that, where they just I did not it, even like, look, ridiculous? look into that, honestly. I just, um, I think it had just had to do with the same kind of shit where they didn't, they just want you to listen to the music. They don't want to, and Jello is still to this day a, a weird, weird in a good way. You know, this is a very political record. Um, and the, you can tell that they're more mature in their writing and shit. It's still fast and loud, but it's it's not like their early stuff, you know. Um, right. Like Holiday in Cambodia and all the like the hits, if you will, at least in the punk rock world. <laughs> the the worst of the best. Yeah, like the um, or the best of the worst. It would be uh, fresh fruit for fucking rotting vegetables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then of course, give me convenience or give me death would be the. The greatest hits, which I think to this day is the fucking best name for a fucking best of or greatest hits album. I think it's just fucking hilarious. It, it, yeah, because me convenience con- or give me death. Yeah, yeah. Like, because people don't want to buy albums, you know. But the first song on here, picking um, that up, I don't know what I would think. No, you, you like don't. there's no, I, there's nothing that I'd be like, oh, that's indie rock or that's. I, I just don't even. Like yeah, like I said, you had to know. So even when I came it across it, I already like knew a, that a this was like by a Kennedy's. twelve like photograph of a parade. <laughs> like, yeah, it's fucked up. I would almost know. think it was like a fucking gimmick picture thing or something. Here's the insert, OG insert, kind of cool. But even that, it's just like there's a guy, the world in his hands, all these people. But yeah. that kind of actually makes sense now that I think about it. But um, yeah, it's a great album. Uh, like I said, the first song, uh, it's like S- Soup is Good, is basically about AI taking over our jobs and things of that nature. It's like, damn, this shit could have been released yesterday. Yeah, it's crazy when somebody writes a song timeless like that, like that, or like, this is in a totally different realm, but like Marvin Gaye's What's Going On, like that can still definitely resonate with oh, shit today. Yeah, for and sure. like, yeah. Yeah, soup is soup is good food. That's what it is. A groin boy they, needs his lunch. That's what they tell you at one. the homeless shelter. Yeah, get this fucking insert back in. But yeah, this is a. I found this um. At the thrift store, I think. Really. Yeah. So this could have been Don's at one time, or, or um. I don't think Don listened to Dead Kennedys. But uh, yeah, this is an OG eighty-five press. Because actually it came with um, this and then the, the next one, Liberty. But that's all I have for... Um, Another for one, those. yeah. This. Deftones Gore. Oh, I was going to bring that one too, and I was like... Where, I mean, it's just a bunch of flamingos, and it says gore in the front. Yeah, you have no idea. And so, like, if you didn't... I didn't fucking bring that If one. you didn't know it was Deftones, like, what the fuck are you going to think that is? Like, I don't... You were just on a Deftones kick, too, for a minute, weren't you? Yeah, I still kind of am. Yeah. But Good, great fucking band. They're one of, like, we, I think we both said this, like that they're one of those bands that you appreciate more like as an yeah, adult. Yeah, definitely. I fell off Deftones for a while like when they got real, real popular. Yeah. And every like Hot Topic person was like, well, we fucking love Deftones. Like the first but time they know, or the like, second time? The first time. Like the White Pony like, shit? Right after White Pony yeah. came out. And then like Queen of the Damned put it on there and everybody yeah. wanted it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So it like, it became huge. And not that you can't like a band that's huge. It just kind of got on my nerves that like. Yeah, all you would hear all was you the would first hear about is, two songs. Yeah. And everybody talked about Deftones, but nobody played anything other than like White Pony or uh like what's a what's a digital bath rx queen uh, yeah like yeah yeah temple of flies or whatever like the three like most popular songs on the record and that was it nobody talked about adrenaline nobody talked about around the fur which around the fur was when i first heard deftones and i like that sound more so it took me a while to like appreciate where they went as yeah, a band. Yeah, you had it, it, there's a very good to go from the front of that band until now and if you do, you can hear the fucking yeah, evolution and But every if you record. go back as an adult, you listen to it, you read the lyrics and everything, like you realize everything yeah. that's really there, you're like, "Oh shit." No, like, it makes a lot is, more sense. Yeah. I have a um Deftones I just story. Got old. 
for a minute there. Like, I was. I think I was 15. No, I had to have been not 15. I was 16 when. I don't know when it came out, but I had it in my fucking CD player. I was 16, and I was listening to Deftones, and I got into my. I rear ended somebody waving at fucking Commander Snake. Shout out to Snake, even though I know he doesn't listen. But, you know, I was doing like a, hey, dude, what's up? Boom! I'm like, <laughs> oh, shit. And just fucked my shit up. That car hit another car that didn't have insurance. They got a ticket. And so, like, I would, for the longest time, dude, I was like, not listening to Deftones while I drive. They're like a bad omen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got over that a few fucking years ago, you know? But that was my Deftones story with White Pony. So I'd be like, fuck that album. Yeah, it's like a... It's a good, like, turn all your lights off and blast it album. Same with Diamond Eyes, I think. Yeah, Diamond Eyes is awesome. Too. But, I mean, really, Deftones didn't do a bad record. It's just gore specifically, like, looking at it, like, I wouldn't know what direction to go to. I'd be like, I fucking, I don't know. This could be beach music for all you know. Right. It could be, like, Christopher Cross sailing music or some shit. I mean, Gore kind of at least points it in one direction, but really... He has a flamingo on his cover, doesn't he? Yeah, the Christopher Cross yeah. album, yeah. That's why, I said, that's why I said it. I was thinking about it. What do you got that's, next? I, that was You're all done? of them, yep. Oh, so my last one, I brought this simply as a joke because the cover is not that misleading. But it's silly. I mean, you like... You look at it, well, you're going to know what it is when I show it, but, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost brought that record, too. Yeah, Metallica's Black Album. Now, I guess looking at it, you really wouldn't know if you didn't know Metallica, but my, my thought behind this was the cover's not misleading, but everybody who thought this was going to be a good record was misled to believe that it was going to be a good record. And it just was not. Now, like, I will say that on that CD repop you have there, it looks like they made the snake uh, more prominent. Yeah, yeah they definitely did. The old ones, man, you could fucking barely see Because you can see even it. see, like, in the... Yeah, you could it's never probably see real that hard shit. on camera. You can see where Metallica. it says Metallica right there. Yeah. But no, you're right. Everybody thought that was going to be, like, Injustice for All 2. Yeah. I will say I jacked this from my kid's CD collection, so I don't own this. Just to, just for the record. <laughs> just so everybody's like, Wolf, it sucks so bad. Why do you have it? I mean, I have some records that do suck. But yeah, this one, I mean, I'm there's, sure there were oh, there's, I fucking actually, there's millions tracks of people on there that I like. No I cannot doubt. stand this album. But, I mean, really, I can't. Uh, Pan, fucking Metallica is like Pantera to me at this yeah, point. Yeah, like, yeah. I just can't hear it. Like, I'm, I'm just sick of it. Like, I'm tired of hearing about oh, I, it. I'm I'm with you. I have um. That album is for sale. Let me know if you want it. Hit me up. I have it. Do you have an ori- like an original? No, one? fuck no. Yeah. I got a repop. I was gonna say, damn, that's probably pricey. I um. I'm gonna get off the Metallica subject. Fuck that. <laughs> well, yeah, I was gonna say I don't want to end I'm this episode you. by like, just 15, 20 minutes of Metallica, Metallica trashing. But, so yeah, I mean. We could have easily brought in, like, 20 more, but I didn't want to make this insanely long because I felt like a lot of the back and forth would be like, hey, look at this. Yeah, you don't know what it is. Next one. (laughs) But, I mean, next time you go to a record store, just, like, have this in mind where you're like, okay, let's look for cool album covers. I'm already thinking of ones I could have brought with me. Oh, I already had, like, like, four in my head that I was like, damn it, I should have grabbed that one. But, yeah, with your point, definitely... Uh, don't judge the fucking album by its jacket, you know what I mean? Yeah, because sometimes you get good, sometimes you get bad. Yep. Um, I, I will say, say that not <laughs> every cool record is good, this. and not every not cool album cover is a bad record. I had to say that weird so I didn't tongue twist it, but you know what I mean? But it, it, I will say this, if you buy a bad album with a cool cover, you could... Do something with the cover. If it's that cool. Oh, but like the, the record sucks? Yeah. So you could like frame the 
Cause, yeah, like that Emerson, Lake, and Palmer yeah, album. Like, like, that, that, yeah, exactly. If I had a convenient spot to put that where I had, like, some other H.R. Geiger artwork, I could, I'd, oh, that'd be, I'd plug it in there for there sure. There you go. But I don't. Most of my walls are covered, and I can't just throw that in my kitchen randomly. I'll put it in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, no, Here's I don't my, have anything. my famed brain salad surgery album. Hilarious. Yeah, let us know in the comments, like, some of your records that you might have bought that, like, you thought were going to be cool and sucked, or the cover was not what you thought the music was going to be, or, you know, I'm sure a lot of record collectors have fallen for the Molly Hatchet thing, because you can find Molly Hatchet most of the time in discount bins, and they look fucking awesome. Yeah, tell us uh, any covers that you think are misleading. I left out um, a couple bands I'll mention, like AFI has a lot of misleading covers, but if you're an AFI fan, you kind of know what you're going to get. Yeah. So that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I'd love but to hear other ones. But Blind Eyes again. You're going into this as Stevie Wonder. Right, right. Or Ronnie Millsap. So. Ray Charles. I'm out of, I'm out of blind guys. Yeah, but then they can never see it. I know. So you only can be temporary. <laughs> yeah, that's blind. true. You're going in with you're going virgin, in like Riddick virgin eyes. And pitch- Riddick, Pitch Black, and you can't look at the records till it's dark? I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, there you go. We'll end on that. Anyway, comment on it. Let us know. Um, follow us on Instagram. Follow us on TikTok. I will say I'm not that great with TikTok. I don't like it, but I'm using it. We're there. So if you like it and you want to follow us there, check it out. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I hate saying that, so I'm not going to say that all the time. If you want to subscribe, you're going to subscribe. Also, um... I asked Ryan earlier about our Discog. We still oh, have our Discord. Or Discord, I'm sorry. We still Discogs. have that. So um we might we might fuck with that. Yeah, we'll um we'll get Discord up and going again and like if people who are users who wanna just come in, stay in the chat room and bullshit back and forth with us, like that'd we'll, be great. We'll be in there for sure. Or any ideas you might have, always reach out. Yeah, anyways, uh thanks for listening and uh fucking peace out. Have a good one.